James chapter 1, verse 5, the Bible says, If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all, without finding fault, and it will be given to him. Lord, we thank you that there is supply in your word. We receive it tonight by your spirit, in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen and amen. All right. James writes this about 50 A.D., all right, about 50 A.D., so the church then uh, is about 20 years old at the time. James, this is not James the Apostle, by this time he's already been killed by Herod, no, this is James, the half-brother of Jesus, the one who had denied him, who called him crazy and everything, but he came to the reality of the Christ and he accepted Jesus as Messiah and as Savior, and he becomes the head of the church in Jerusalem. And so he writes then from that perspective and that position of authority. And he says, back in verse 5, one more time, he says, if any of you lacks wisdom or if you have need of wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. All right. So we've been dealing with this concept or this word uh, wisdom in the New Testament. We say it over and over again, but let's get it one more time. Uh, it's Safia, divine wisdom, superior wisdom, S-O-P-H-I-A, Safia, like Sophia. Safia, talking about divine wisdom, superior wisdom, or a wisdom that is, is beyond the, the average or the norm of what people uh, understand or term as wisdom. Now, Jewish tradition offered practical wisdom. You could sit down with a Jewish scribe, an elder, and he would give you all kinds of information, instruction, all kinds of advice. Well, you need to do it this way, and you need to do that this way, and, and, and if you're going to tackle that situation, or you want to plan out your life, you need to do this, you need to do that, and he give you a formula. So that's called practical wisdom, and that's good. Nothing wrong with it. And Judaism offered practical wisdom. The traditions of Judaism offered practical wisdom. But they didn't offer spiritual wisdom. And so what James is talking about here when he says, if any of you lack wisdom, he's not talking about practical wisdom. He's talking about spiritual wisdom. Everybody say spiritual wisdom. Spiritual. The spiritual wisdom that man lacks, because there's obviously a lack here that he points to. There's a need here. There's something missing, something lacking. So the spiritual wisdom that man lacks and man needs is acquired, James says, from knowing God. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Well, how can I ask somebody I don't know? So it's implied then, first of all, that I need to know God. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. What kind of wisdom then can we ask for? James says, if any man lack any man need, let him ask. What kind of wisdom then are we allowed to ask for? All right, let's deal with this for a little bit. We're going to unpack this. James' promise here in verse 5 tells us that we can ask God for an understanding, first of all, of who he is. Spiritual wisdom begins with an understanding of who God is. If I'm going to know things that are spiritual, I must go to the source of everything that is spiritual. And so I must be able to identify who that or what that source is. And so it is, in fact, God. God is the source of, of all wisdom. And so James promises, he says, all right, look, you can ask God for an understanding of who He is. A lot of people will tell you that you cannot understand who God is. That's a lie. You can understand who God is. God will reveal Himself to you. God will cause you to understand and to know things about Himself. God does not want to be unknowable. God does not want to remain a mystery. God was a mystery to Paul, for instance, until he met Jesus on the Damascus Road. 
He kept saying, it's the mystery of God, the mystery of God, the mystery of God, until he met Jesus. And once he met Jesus, then the mystery was no longer a mystery. So God is very clear and God is very uh, intentional about you knowing who he is. He wants you to be able to understand him. He wants you to be able to have a grasp on who he is, his personage, his person, his identity. He wants you to know that he is God and that he's God alone. So you never confuse him with anybody else or ascribe to anybody else what belongs to him. So he wants you to understand, first of all, that you can ask for an understanding of who God is. And then, secondly, in asking for wisdom, we are allowed to ask for a capacity to understand the truth of His Word. I can know who He is, and I can understand His Word. Many people say, oh, I, I can't understand the Bible. It confuses me. It's, it's, uh, it, it's too... Um, it's too con uh, complicated, or it's, it's, too, it's too intricate, or there's too many stories. Well, well, just take one at a time. Just start with one. Start with one chapter. Start with one book. That's why we give you the, 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 the readings for, for every month. To try and hold on, to grasp onto something, get a hold of the reality of what you're reading there. And God says, listen, if you want to understand my word, you can. I'll give you understanding. Just ask. All you need to do is ask. And then when you sit with the word, the Holy Spirit will give you insight into understanding the word of God. Oh, we were reading that little story today that we de dealt with just a few minutes ago about the Levite on his way to the temple in Shiloh and the man offers him to supply whatever he needs. Well, I, I, I come up with that. I read that and I go, oh, number one, he's a Levite. Number two, he's on his way to the house of the Lord. Number three, he's a priest, so he's going to go serve there. Those three things came like that. Why? Because I have understanding. Are you hearing me? Guess what? You can have understanding too. You can read the word and come away with a, with a revelation and go, wow, that's crazy. That's great stuff. I never saw that before. I never understood that before. Now I'm here to teach you and to preach to you and that's what I do and I'm gifted and anointed and I'm educated to do it. But you don't have to only rely on me. Hello, somebody. You can pick up your Bible and you can get a, a grasp and a gleaning from what's in the word. Especially on a daily basis. We come here on Sundays. We come here on Wednesdays. I post stuff on, on social media every day so people can learn, and they do. And I get a lot of people who say, Pastor, thank you. I've learned so much from, from watching you, from reading your material every single day. And I, I thank the Lord. I have a, a huge congregation on Facebook. It's huge. It's massive. I've got a mega church on Facebook. Amen. I do. Amen. A lot of them are more faithful than amen, amen anyway. So, but the reality is, is this, is that we can learn the word of the Lord. Amen. And he gives us understanding and the wisdom to comprehend. So he said, just ask me for that. Listen, let me say this quickly because this is important, that the wisdom that God gives is not information about him. There's a difference between information and wisdom. So the wisdom he gives is not information. You can get information all day. You can read a thousand things about God and never know him and never know about him, or rather know, understand him, rather. You can know about him, but not know him. There's a lot of people who know about God, they don't know God. So he said, I want you to know me, and I'm going to give you the wisdom to do so. So he's not interested necessarily in giving us uh, information about him, but rather, watch this, revelation to know and understand him. Amen. He wants to give you, look at somebody and tell them you, amen, revelation to not only know him, but understand him. I want to know God, and I want to understand God. 
Now, the interesting thing is that the Old Testament would always say, you know, that his ways are beyond tracing and his, and his, his uh, uh, plans are beyond finding out, etc., etc. And so they would keep him as a mystery. The Old Testament, remember, is always prophetically foreshadowing the revelation of what will come. In the New Testament, Paul says we can know. The writers say we can know. The apostles tell us we can know. That there is a means by which we can know God. Understand that for the most part, they didn't have the word in the Old Testament. It was being compiled, being put together, being written. So they didn't have the word and nor did they have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We have both the word and we have the spirit. So we can really know God. And we can understand. There's things that you and I can understand about God. Don't ever let anybody say, oh, you're gonna, you'll never understand God. You can't understand God. That's a lie. You can know him and you can understand him. God is the source of wisdom about himself. Hmm. See, this isn't wisdom about wisdom that he's talking about here this spiritual wisdom isn't this practical wisdom like you know you go, you go sit down with somebody and they they give they're a sage and they tell you things that are you, they think you should know you know like when i talk to my kids at them now nah, you you need to know this you know they, they're grown but i still call them my kids you know you need to know this and let me tell you this and and let, let me instruct you know i'm i'm I, i'm telling you something now you need to know this i still do that but that's not what he's talking about That's not what James is talking about. James is talking about wisdom about himself. About God's God's wisdom about himself. And God then grants that wisdom to those who sincerely seek it from him. If you really want to know about God, if you really want to have an understanding about God, seek him. He said, seek me and you'll find me. Oh, hallelujah. Seek me and you'll find. It doesn't mean I'm over here hiding in a corner going, hide and go seek. Come and find me. Come. No, 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 no. The word find there means to meet, to have an encounter, to have an understanding, to walk in, in, in a sense of, of recognition of, of that who that person is. He says, seek me. Come on, come, come and get me. I want you to get me. I don't want to be a a fog to you. I don't want to be just a mystery. I don't want to be a myth. I I want to be a reality in your life. Come and seek me. So he will grant it to those who sincerely seek it from him. Now, let's deal with this for a minute in that the purpose and the benefit of wisdom is allied to understanding God's purposes and plans for our lives. Why do I need to know wisdom? Why do I have to know wisdom about God? What's the purpose of having wisdom about God? What's the benefit of having wisdom about God? It's this, that I will then be able to understand God's purposes and plan for my life. Hallelujah, somebody. See, God doesn't want you to go around with a question mark on your face either. Hallelujah. He gets no pleasure out of seeing his children walk around going, oh, I don't know what to do. I have, I have no clue. What am I going to do now? I wish God would tell me something. I don't, you know, I don't know. Why am I here? God says, oh, man, I didn't create you to do that. I didn't create you to be like that. I want you to know who you are. I want you to know why you're here. I want you to know who I am first because you won't know any of that until you come to me. So God wants us to know then his plan, and his purposes for our lives. And wisdom provides a clear view of our situation, watch this, from God's perspective. You and I all have situations and we have circumstances. And when we look at them, we look at them from our perspective. And so we see with the limited understanding, we see uh, looking through a cloud, a glass darkly, Paul says. We have, we have fragmented understanding. 
We understand a little bit of this, a little bit of that, the, that, that big old piece over there. We don't get that. We don't know where that fits. And so when we look at our situations and our circumstances from our perspective, we come away with a limited understanding. God says, no, no, no. I want you to know me so I can give you wisdom so that you see your situation from my perspective. I want you to see your situation the way I see it. Because I've already got a plan for your situation. I've already got a purpose for your circumstance. I want you to see it from my perspective. And then with that wisdom, everybody say that wisdom. Then we perceive that every situation, whether its source seems to be good or not, whatever its source that every situation is an opportunity for God to bring about his purpose in our lives. If I see that God is in it, if I see that God can fix it, if I see that God has a solution, if I see that God has an answer, if I see that God has a purpose in what's going on, if I see that there's a plan in there, then I can start to see a solution that I never saw before. Not only that, it frees me from fear and anxiety. That's why God doesn't want us to walk in fear or anxiety or doubt. So wisdom supplies all of that so we don't have to be that. Amen, somebody. God's wisdom. Now listen, let me tell you this. This is really important. God's wisdom does not dismiss the situation we're in with a simplistic solution. What am I, what am I mean? What do I mean? This. Oh, I've got this situation. I got this circumstance. I don't know what to do. Pray about it, brother. Hallelujah. Bless you. I'll be praying for you. You know, that's a simplistic solution. We throw those out like, you know, like the, the, the freebies, you know, you know, praying for you. And we go, yeah, that's nice. But in reality, a lot of us still stay confused. And we're still bewildered. Now, I'm glad you're praying for me. I appreciate that, but I don't have an answer yet. So God is not offering here a simplistic solution. Just, just wait on the Lord, you know. I mean, it's true, but it's got to be more than that. Are you hearing me tonight? I'm, I'm trying to help somebody in here because, we, you know, we, we get real good at being religious. We get real, real good at being religious. That's religious. Just wait on the Lord. Yeah, and then we feel like we gave somebody a word. Stop it. I'm glad we don't do that nonsense here. Amen. No, God's wisdom does not dismiss the situation we're in with a simplistic solution. Instead, it gives us a way to handle our situations with what's called a root solution. Not a simplistic solution, but a root solution. What is a root solution? A root solution is a solution that incorporates a divine understanding of human design and behavior. I'll say it again. It is a solution that incorporates a divine understanding of human design and behavior. In other words, God says, you have a situation, you have a circumstance, come to me. I'm going to give you a solution that involves and that incorporates, that brings into play who you are. How can we do that and how do we know that God can do that? Why? Because God is the one who made us. God, I, God says, I made you. I know what makes you tick. I understand your behavioral patterns. I understand your mind. I understand your frustrations. I understand your limitations. I understand what you're going through right now. I understand the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. I have everything in the middle taken care of. So come to me for wisdom because I'm going to give you a root solution. I'm going to give you a solution that has my divine input in it. And that solution will work. Now, James continues, and I'm going to wrap this up with this because this is important. James continues to say, he says, and God 
when you ask him for wisdom, he says, what did he say? He said, God who gives generously to all without finding fault. God who gives generously. So he continues to say that God gives generously. Everybody say generously. generously. How many of you know that's not with a, with a, with a teaspoon? That's with the biggest bucket you can find. God says, here, I'm going to pour it out on you. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to give you a limited amount of wisdom for a big situation. I'm going to give you all the wisdom you need for the size of your circumstance. I'm going to give it generously, too. Yeah. You know, like, uh, when... when when I, we used to have people over my house when I was a kid, and, and, and my dad, you know, if people came over to eat, you know, Italian, you know, you sit down and eat, and, and my mother would serve them a nice plate, you know, and my dad be watching them while they're eating. And if they got their plate about half done, he'd get up, get the pot, and go, here, here's some more. Hey, you want some more? Here. No, I'm fine, Mr. Dan. No, here, here's some more. You know, you know, have more, have more. He was generous. God says, here, have more. You need wisdom? Have more. You're, not, you're lacking in this thing? Here, I got more for you. God wants to give it to you, and he wants to give you wisdom generously. And then he says, and he does it, watch this, without Finding fault. He gives wisdom without finding fault. Say finding fault. The word or the phrase finding fault is one word in Greek. And it's the Greek word onidizo. Onidizo. O-N-E-I-D-I-Z-O. O-N-E-I-D-I-Z-O. Onidizo. Say onidizo. Without finding fault. And it would, listen, here's what it means. It means without heaping insults on you. He gives you wisdom generously without heaping insults on you. Like, um, really? You, you coming to me for wisdom? Well, you're a big old dummy, so I'm not giving you nothing. No. And what did you do the last time I tried to give you some wisdom? You went off and, and blew it. You, you wasted my wisdom and you made the wrong decision and you took the wrong path and, and you knew better. So I ain't giving you nothing. No, no, no. It's too late. No, 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 no. The Bible says he does it without finding fault. Hallelujah, somebody. God will never Ever, when you come to him and ask him for wisdom, he will never turn you away and say you don't deserve it. No, James tells us that God gives that wisdom generously. He gives it without finding fault. And he conveys the idea then that God's spontaneous, sincere generosity is unwavering. Means it doesn't change. Doesn't go over here and go over there. It stays steady. Despite our previous record. God will never hold your record in front of you and say you don't deserve wisdom. Hallelujah. He does it without finding fault. Why? Because that giving of wisdom is based on his grace. Hallelujah. Anybody glad about grace tonight? James' confidence in divine grace and God's intense desire for us to come to him for wisdom reflects God's undivided, unwavering intent to always give us good gifts. Let me just tell you that the gift of divine wisdom, of superior wisdom, of spiritual wisdom, of Sophia about God is one of the greatest gifts you can ever have in life. Don't go, through, don't go and you don't have to go through your life without wisdom. Hallelujah. I mean, you're, listen to me. Your whole perspective on your whole life can change right now. Right now. Forever. Amen. How would you like to wake up tomorrow morning just feeling like, you know what? I got this on lock. 
No matter what's going on, I got this. I know what's, what's up. I know what's happening. I got that. Boy, I got this. I got, I got this. I ain't got to worry about it. I got this. Why? Because you have wisdom from God. Hallelujah. Not because you're a wheeler dealer, but because you know wisdom from God. Amen. As you ask God for wisdom, we're going we're to do that tonight, just before we close. As you ask God for wisdom, His wisdom, James says, do not doubt. Amen. Don't ask Him to say, well, maybe He'll give it to me, maybe He won't. I don't know if He will. Depends on this. No, 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 no. He says, if you need wisdom, ask. And God will give it generously. And he'll give it without fault to everyone who asks. So when you ask, and we're going to do that in just a moment. When you ask God for that wisdom, do not doubt. But instead, believe and trust God to give you his wisdom. And that he will give it to you generously and without fault. And guess what? He will. Stand to your feet. Lift your hands right where you are. Lord, we thank you tonight for your word, for the promise in your word. And you tell us that if we need wisdom, and we do, that we should ask you for it. And that you will, not might, not if we beg, not if we plead, but simply ask. You will give us that wisdom. And you'll do it generously. And you will do it without finding fault. Because of your grace. And so we do not doubt. We believe and we trust that as we ask right now, you will give your children wisdom with hands lifted i just want you to open your mouth tonight and say lord my god i'm asking you for wisdom i need it you have it i'm asking you to give it to me you said you would you said you'd do it generously and without finding fault so i receive it it's mine. it's mine. Now, by your spirit, for your glory, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now give him praise. Hallelujah.